again through a constitutional amendment now i think the primary defect right now of funding in illinois not just education but government in general is the revenue code which adopt adopted i think back then perhaps for political compromise reasons provisions are really i don't think have served us that well particularly i don't believe we should have a flat rate income tax in illinois i think we should have a progressive income tax based on ability to pay we have a very unfair tax system in this state a number of independent groups have looked at the illinois tax system and found a very punishing burden on middle class taxpayers and modest income taxpayers particularly poor people and uh... our state tax system which has a flat rate income tax is uh... one of the culprits uh... on why that tax system is so unfair and has such a punishing burden on people of modest means and it seems to me we ought to really address this square on the only way to do it is with a constitutional amendment we ought to follow a principle as old as the bible and that, that taxes are based on ability to pay now there may be some who say well you can tinker here and there and pass this statute and raise this rate i don't really feel that that's the way to go i think we should loose uh... the situation and have a constitutional amendment that says if you make over a quarter million dollars a year and you're an individual uh... you will pay a higher income tax rate than uh, the cleaning lady who might make twenty five thousand dollars a year and be supporting two children to say to donald trump who might live perhaps in his trump towers in chicago uh... before we know it that he should pay the exact same income tax rate as the cleaning lady of trump towers to me is violating social justice it's very unfair it's one of the reasons we have all these gimmicks you see over there in the state capitol on how to finance government we should go with the progressive income tax and cut the tax burden on many many people in illinois the great number of people uh... by having a fair system now the only way that issue will get addressed it seems to me is with the debate on a constitutional convention and uh... the voters vote in favor uh, then the delegates will be elected they'll have an opportunity to address that issue i think in closing uh... one thing to keep in mind in fact i think would very much happen is that uh, we're not going to talk about a rewrite of the constitution in its entirety that could happen theoretically but it's quite unlikely practically what will be proposed and i think in a very short period of time a convention that will last far less than forty years ago and cost a modest amount of money compared to the cost of not doing anything at all uh... but i think what would happen in two thousand and nine within a year or so the delegates would be elected would meet would propose amendments uh... that the voters would vote on and i wouldn't be surprised that they would vote on it as soon as uh... the uh... march or so of two thousand and ten perhaps even earlier and the people of illinois would have a real chance to say in the twenty first century that we uh, basically like many parts of our current constitution but there are some parts that are, have defects that aren't working well for the people and what we really want to do in illinois is strengthen the people of illinois we have plenty of politicians in both the legislative branch and the executive branch who have all kinds of power the idea of government and democracy is not to strengthen them and make them more powerful the whole idea with a constitutional convention is to make the voters stronger and i think this is a technique that's been used not only in our state but if you go back to the beginning of our country before even the declaration of independence the whole idea of constitutional conventions are a invention of american democracy where the people say that we are the government and you have to trust the people and we will with a convention write the fundamental rules of government and if we don't believe in that kind of healthy exercise in democracy in the land of Lincoln in the 21st century, I think we're really missing the boat because the people have confidence in the ability of average folks who live from paycheck to paycheck to make right decisions for their state and their country's future, and together we can make the will of the people the law of the land. Thank you very much. I, let me start by saying at the uh, risk of sounding um, uh, professorial, uh, which I am, 
Um, I think one of the first things that people have to do in uh, addressing this question of a constitutional convention uh, is decide what a constitution should be, what role it should play. And uh, there are different approaches to this. Uh, you can either look at the Constitution as a sort of a glorified statutory compendium, uh, or you can look at it as a basic charter of government, <laughs> which basically sets out you know, the branches of government, the separation of powers, the Bill of Rights, uh, the role of local government, and not much more than that. And I should at the outset say that my approach uh, is the latter. Um, I do think of the Constitution, uh, and you know, there's some good, um, uh, we've got some good history on that. Uh, the federal Constitution is pretty much the way I think that ought to be, a basic charter of, of government. Uh, some state constitutions are not, no question about that. Some are incredibly detailed. Uh, and the more detailed your constitution is, the more often you are going to have to uh, look at it again uh, and say, gee, we've got to do something about this. Uh, that was the problem that we had uh, with the 1870 constitution. And that is one reason why I feel very strongly that um, uh, and I could give you some marvelous examples of why I think that uh, the Constitution should be kept uh, as much as humanly possible dealing with basics and not with today's hot button, hotline uh, issues, because those issues are going to change very rapidly. Um, I, let me take just a half a second to explain why we put this 20-year automatic call into the Constitution. The one thing that, uh, uh, that Tony forgot to mention in um, my uh, uh, curriculum vitae was I was also a delegate to the 1970 Constitutional, 1970, not 1870 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Constitution. Um, and uh, uh, the, we did include the 20 year thing. Uh, and I think maybe it's, this has been slightly suggested, but let me just emphasize. Uh, the 1870 Constitution had been almost impossible to change. Uh, part of it had to do not just with the requirement that uh, the three fifths or two thirds of the legislators had to propose an amendment, but mostly it had to do with the vote that was required to adopt an amendment. Uh, it was basically, for most of the history of the 1870 Constitution, a majority of those voting in the election. And since lots of people uh, vote in an election but don't vote on separate issues at all, uh, it became virtually impossible to, um, uh, to amend the Constitution. I think there were, just between, what was it, 1890 and 1950, there were 15 proposals that made it to the uh, ballot, but only a handful of them actually passed under that uh, extraordinarily difficult requirement. Uh, and, and Peter Tomei, who was the really very marvelous chairman of the Suffrage and Elections Committee in CONCON, uh, kept saying over and over, if we, meaning the CONCON delegates, if we do our work well, we shouldn't need another constitutional convention for a long, long, long period of time. Uh, and if the legislature pays attention to what people want, uh, then uh, the people should turn down uh, and will turn down having another constitutional convention. So it was never intended to be an automatic constitution every 20, uh, constitutional convention every 20 years. It was only here is an opportunity to say um, we ought to look at this. And I would have to tell you, I think right now, uh, that 20-year automatic call has, in a sense, uh, begun to serve its purpose. Because here we are talking about the Illinois Constitution uh, and uh, deciding you know, various things about it. And that's precisely what the provision was uh, included for. So I think it has served its purpose. Um, 